Oh, yeah. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here on Cream of the Crop, a fantasy hockey podcast presented by Apples and Genos, the number one fruit-based fantasy hockey podcast out there. That's confirmed. All right. We got it. We got the we got the gold star. We got the picture on the fridge. It's confirmed. All right. Uh, I'm your host, Blake Creamer. Please follow me over on Twitter, slash X at Blake Creamer AG. And while I got you, I do have to mention that Apples and Genos has an amazing fantasy hockey draft guide that you need to get your hands on, all right? If you like winning fantasy hockey, then you'll like this beautiful 141-page document available uh, for $7.99 as a standalone purchase if you join the Apples and Genos Patreon. So get your biscuits over there. And then while you're at it, you got to welcome my co-host here today, Josh Hutchinson. Buddy, I missed you. It's always fun to get on pod with you here. How are you doing today? I know we don't do this enough. I'm doing pretty well. A uh, little slightly under the weather. You could probably hear it in my voice and I'm a little congested. You might see me blowing my nose here and there, but uh, I'll try and I'll try and mute, mute the mic as, as much as I can. But I'm ready to talk some D, baby. Oh, yeah, buddy. That's, that's what we're doing here today. We're, we're talking about the top 10 defensemen here, uh, you know, based on our uh, projections and lists. Uh, Nate, Josh, and I have all made a top 10 list, and we've combined it and come out, uh, spit out a top 10 defenseman list for points and category leagues. So Josh and I are going to go through that. Um, but before we do that, my man, uh, I just, I'm I'm interested because draft season is upon us, man. This is amazing. Like, I know you're drafting a couple, I'm drafting a couple. I've got another draft coming up this weekend. And yeah, it's, I think drafting defensemen is an interesting piece for fantasy. And I just wanted to get your thoughts real quick on what kind of strategies you employ uh, with these defensemen. Are you the type of guy that likes to fade defensemen or, you know, do you like to get a couple in your first few picks? I mean, how are you, how are you approaching this position this year? Yeah, I mean, I've been pretty outspoken uh, on rolling lines about how I do like to, to draft D fairly early, especially in points leagues. Um, Bangers Cats is a little bit different just because you can there there is a lot more value for guys that aren't necess- aren't like big point producers or power play quarterbacks. Um, they, they can uh, there's a lot more defense that kind of like uh, fill the other categories. So there, there's some value a little bit more at the bottom of your lineup so you can fade them a little further. But uh in in the cacuffle specifically i do like to to draft defense fairly early um just because it's a 14 team league uh there's uh it, it gets dry very quickly um but i am noticing i i'm in a couple different drafts right now i'm in a li- uh we're doing a slow draft for one of our listener leagues as well right now and uh a lot of people are employing that strategy so i mm-hmm. i have been kind of altering it uh, at times because when everyone drafts the exact same way you kind of have to you, you have to adapt like they, it, it's it's not uh it's hard to get a leg up on everybody else when everyone's got the same mindset yeah so true man never let them know your next move all right you're drafting all the d i'm drafting all the f all right that's what's happening here um but yeah i i agree with you there i know nate's on board with this too like it to me it just makes sense to draft defensemen a little bit early in most formats right even bangers cats like i mean you know there's there's higher level defensemen or higher tiers of defensemen you want to focus on and then if you don't get them maybe you you go a different way there but certainly for points leagues and certainly in couple which is a 14 team league so yeah um one thing i've noticed in my couple there's a guy that took three defensemen in his first four picks like wow. that that's an interesting strategy like i'm all for value uh over replacement but that I, I don't know i feel like if you're drafting three defensemen your first four picks in a points league you're you're kind of capping your your offensive ceiling there a little bit yeah i think you're i think you're right like there's there's so many weapons in the first few rounds that it it, it makes it challenging i find usually round two unless unless it's like unless Dalene or bouchard or yossi falls in my lap like i'm taking i'm taking somebody uh with offensive upside up front mm-hmm. um it's when you get to you get to round three four or five when uh the forwards are a little less interesting um and the, and there are some some big defensive weapons that's when i'm i'm i start kind of pulling the trigger on d and then sometimes i will go like in the couple i'm i'm on the turn i i got the 14th pick which is great yeah uh, and uh my uh, round three and four i took hamilton and warinsky which felt like a reach on both 
accounts, but I still do feel pretty good because I knew that neither of them was coming back to me um, the next time around. So, and I, I felt like I did need to shore shore my D up, but that's about the range where I feel comfortable just kind of taking a bunch of D. Yeah, I love that. Well, let's get into it, man, because um, one thing I've done, I've made some unofficial tiers of our of our top 10 here, and we'll just quickly talk on that as we go through. Um, but yeah, we'll go down from 10 to 1, and we'll start with points leagues and just get into it here. So without further ado, the top 10 A and G defensemen. Here we go. At number 10, we've got Dobby. Master has given Dobby a sock. Oh, Joshy, do you like uh, Harry Potter? Are you, you are you in on this? What's going on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I I was a big Harry Potter guy. Didn't read the oh. books. I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a big reader uh, oh, okay. <laughs> of yeah, of I, novels. I'm but, with you, man. Uh, I got no attention span. I I'm an auditory I'm an auditory learner. Uh, so I I'm a big podcast guy, but yeah, not <laughs> yeah. My attention span is brutal for reading, but yes. Uh, I, that was the long way of saying yes. I do like Harry Potter. Sweet. All right. And how was my Dobby impression? Are you, are you, were you impressed with that? Not bad. Not bad okay. at all. All right. I, I, I'll, I'll, I can do better. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll rip into it a little bit later when you least expect it. Anyways, we're talking about Noah Dobson here, okay? Um, I had Noah Dobson as my ninth overall defenseman. Josh, you had him as number 12, and Nate had him as his number 11. So he comes in at number 10 for us on the A&G aggregate here. Dobson had a great season. I mean, there's no question there. 10 goals, 60 assists for 70 points. Oh, my God. Um, including 24 points on the power play, which is really nice. Big time minutes. Uh, his minutes shot up by four minutes last year. Um, so this is exactly what we wanted to see when we were talking about Noah Dobson last year at the, in the preseason, right? Like, yeah, if he gets some minutes, bang, are we going to see a, a big season from Dobson? And that absolutely happened. So um, that all said, I mean, I feel like there was a, a little bit of a wrench thrown in with Dobson just in terms of the way his season ended when Patrick Waugh got in there. And we've talked about it a little bit here, but yeah, um, he, he wasn't getting top power play for a couple games there in the playoffs. Like he was minimized a little bit, right? Like he had a 42% power play uh, share in the playoffs and they were giving it to that legend, that Islander legend, Mike Riley, Patrick Waugh, what are you doing? He had his two Stanley cup rings clogging his brain or something. I don't know what was happening. Oxygen wasn't <laughs> getting in. Um, but anyways, I don't know. Are you concerned at all about Noah Dobson this year and his role in this team? Uh, I'm not concerned. No, um, I, I do think that when you, you talked about the ice time increase, uh, yeah. there is definitely a caveat there because they at even strength. It, he uh, Patrick Waugh really leveled things out uh, across his top three defensemen. Mm -hmm. uh, Pulak, Pellick, and Dobson got very similar time on ice, uh, whereas under Lane Lambert, his 5v5 time on ice was over 20 minutes a game, uh, and then add on the power play as well. So um, it was a pretty significant decrease and, and just a, a, a change in philosophy in the way that uh, the defense was deployed. Um, and that should be taken into, into consideration when drafting Noah Dobson. That being said, um, while I don't think that he's going to, to crack 70 uh, this year again, I still had him for 63 points uh, with, with that, with those uh, time on ice metrics kind yeah. of, baked into the projection um so i i, I don't i don't think it's going to be a big issue like i i think he's the power play guy i don't think mike is mike riley still on the team did they bring him back i, don't, I actually don't even know let me just look uh, that yeah up he, he's got he's got one more year at 1.25 one more year uh, okay yeah and then he's a ufa okay gotcha well uh i mean i'm still not concerned about noah dobson yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was strange though. I thought like it was a weird choice that Patrick Waugh made. And then obviously he was playing Varlamov over Sorokin. Um, yeah. What was he just trying to put his stamp on the team? I don't know. But uh, you know, that all said, I, I'm obviously the highest out of the three of us on Dobson. I've got him for 65 points. And I, I just, I like the floor with this player. And I think that those minutes are for real. I think he should get a bunch of minutes like he did last year. Um, and like he, yes, he had uh, 24 power play points last year, but one goal on the power play. One. Well, I mean, damn. No, I, I feel like he's got more in the wheelhouse there. Even just the year previous, he had five power play goals. So I think, you know, this is a guy that's probably going to get double digit goals, um, you know, 60 to 65 points. I think that's absolutely reasonable and awesome for riffs. Like he had 180 blocks last year, 84 hits, which is a career high. Both are career highs. Um, yeah. Uh, 
as it, it makes total sense because he's getting a crap ton of ice time. So I, I like the floor here for Dobson. And I think there is a little bit of a ceiling. Like where are you on the Islanders in general next year? Cause we got the, yeah, with, with a full season under wall and you know, they've got uh, a different looking top six now with Duclair. And then uh, what, what's that guy's name? Siplikov. Is that, I, I'm probably saying that wrong. Yeah. I'm not looking, but yeah. What do you think of that? I think well? that's how, that's how Elliot Friedman said it. So that's, that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to stick with it. Not that he's, Sweet. he's necessarily a, a, a pronunciation savant, but I, I think that, uh, I don't know. I'm not really that much f feeling that much different about the Islanders than I was last year. Like they way overperformed in terms of wins, uh, mm -hmm. under the hood. They were fucking awful. Like at five <laughs> V five power play, every, every position, like it was, yep. it was not they were they were just not a good team like i don't know how they truly truly won because of goaltending uh yeah. their their goaltending was out outstanding uh the defensive environment in front of them was not good uh they could not generate offense i do think that uh anthony declare um could help uh it could help matt barzell i think he's there there are some legitimate fantasy options on this team and again like i talk about this a lot but in situations where the team is not exciting, you tend to find diamonds in the rough because people mm -hmm. just aren't paying attention to them in terms of fantasy. Like the, and the Islanders are definitely that type of team. Like you're going to get almost any, any guy uh, of any fantasy relevance at value in a draft. So I think with the exception of maybe Dobson, Dobson, Dobson seems to be a guy that, that goes pretty high, but yeah, I, I don't know. Siplikov is a weird one too. He's yeah. got like, uh, he had 33 goals last year, but his previous career high was 10. And I think he had like a 19.5% shooting percentage, which kind of came out of nowhere. So to me, I'm like, I really don't know what to expect there. Like, I feel like that was probably a bit of a, a lucky season. Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Like maybe he's like an Andre Kuzmenko or something. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see what, what he, what he looks like. Cause I, I truly have no idea. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know too much about the guy, just that he's a bit of a beefer. So maybe even instead of Kuzmenko, we're yeah. looking at like a Svechnikov, like a Svechnikov light kind of player, you know, like a, like more of a power forward type profile. So that would be nice. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Anyways, we're talking talking about the Islanders when we should be talking about just Noah Dobson. He's our number 10 and we feel good about this. All right, let's move on to our number nine and we're feeling fine. Uh, number nine defenseman here for ANG, Dougie hamilton oh yeah buddy that shot monster um yeah i think to like I'll, I'll just let you know i had hamilton higher than both you guys as well i had hamilton as my number seven josh you had him as your number 10 and then nate had him as his number nine so doug hamilton last season um you know obviously injury shortened had 16 points in 20 games got bounced off power play one there randomly even before he was injured lindy ruff what the hell are you doing i don't i don't know um but uh yeah it, this is i feel like we're gonna get dougie well we were gonna get dougie at a little bit of value this year until news came out that luke hughes was was injured but i i mean this the reason i love dougie hamilton so much is he shoots the puck like a forward and that's something that not a lot of other defensemen do right this guy his shots and goal per 60 five on five last year 8.59 that's insane right like you know we talk about that 10 number of shots and goal per 60 threshold this defenseman is at 8.5 last year like that's amazing right so um you got to shoot to score and because he does that in spades this guy's a 20 goal threat every year and now that he's definitely guaranteed to get power play one at the start of the year i think that's why i'm a little bit higher uh, on dougie hamilton this year but um even with that luke news uh luke hughes news happening there josh that's weird huey lewis and the news oh god i've just uh, lost my mind there anyways with that news coming out uh would you value dougie a little bit higher because we had these lists made before that happened i mean wh where are you at with hamilton at this point yeah, no, I absolutely would. I think, I think, even just the fact we talked about this off mic, but uh, I think that because he's going to get a, a shot right off the bat, like, and there's no competition there, if the Devils power play really pops uh, right away, like, there's, like, he'll probably stick there for the entire year. So that and and if that's the case, uh, the upside on Hamilton's huge. Like, I have, I would have him as like a top five defenseman in the league. So that's. I I uh I love Dougie Hamilton. Prior to this year, he was one of my one of my favorite defensemen in fantasy. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a guy that I would reach for because I just think, um, yeah, like you said, a shot monster. Um, yeah, just 
the 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 upside is huge for him uh we saw him score over 70 points just a, just two years ago in new jersey so yeah I, I i like him a lot so yeah i probably would boost him a little bit on this list um now that now that we know the luke hughes news but but uh yeah it was uh, uh my i i would have to kind of alter my projections but that being said like i i still do think there's probably going to be some power play share once when hughes gets back um but i i i mean i hope not but yeah uh i i yeah Anyways, I, I read something about like, um, and I don't know how true this is, and I can't remember the tweet now, so this is horrible reporting on my end. But um, Jack Hughes had sort of requested to have Luke Hughes on the power play with him, and they and Lindy Ruff sort of made that happen. But um, Nate and I talked about this a little bit in our projection show with New Jersey. Is it's it's clearly two different styles of power play. If you have Luke Hughes on there as opposed to Dougie Hamilton, right? Oh yeah, yeah. If you got Hamilton, like he's he's at the end of the passes. He's the one firing the puck, and guys are trying to get rebounds or or whatever. Whereas Luke Hughes is more of a facilitator, right? So yeah, I mean that's the only thing I that's the only reason I could think of that they put Hughes on there instead of Hamilton. But I mean this guy got 28 power play points in 2022, 23. He's good to go. He does that. So I, I really feel like um, his floor is a lot more. Solid with that injury news um but one thing that does suck about hamilton is uh yeah he has amazing shots on goal but the rest of the perifs are pretty stinky like you know in his last full season 64 hits and 86 blocks dougie come on buddy step into somebody but uh you know i i don't know you do you think that dougie hamilton will keep that power play just throughout the season even when hughes comes back or do you think they'll they'll kind of flip-flop I mean, it's interesting. You talked about the philosophy and how how the look of the power play completely change changes depending on on which of which of him or Luke Hughes is on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see Luke Hughes getting a spot there just because you've got guys like Timo Meyer and Jack Hughes that fire the puck like crazy, yeah. um, and maybe you want those guys to be to be. Um, the guy shooting the puck as opposed to Dougie Hamilton firing it from the point. So. Um, yeah, there's there's definitely a possibility there. Or you just load it up with with Dougie Hamilton. You have everyone just like like firing the puck, just at, at, like and, and get get your your Corsi four metrics uh, all the way up, uh, dial it up to ten. And uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I I, I think that. I don't know, man. I I hope that Dougie Hamilton gets. I I love him so much. Yeah. Uh, I hope he gets the he he. But it, it, it's hard to say. I know that um, Sheldon Keefe was uh, was itchy with Morgan Riley on the power play, but they're completely different players. Like I I would much rather have Dougie Hamilton running a power play than Morgan Riley. So um, yeah, it, it it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I think he's good to go, and I'm I'm excited about what uh, what he might be able to do this year. All right. Let's move on. We got to talk about our number eight pick, and it is Zach Wierenski, ZW of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting one because we did have a little bit of uh, a difference in where we were taking this guy. Um, but for me, I had Wierenski as my number 11. Josh, you had him uh, as your fifth best defenseman off the board. And then Nate had him at number eight. So talk to me a little bit about what you like so much about Zach Wierenski this year. So the things that I like about Zach Wierenski are actually very similar to the things that I like about Dougie Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Um, he is another shot monster. I think people don't really pay attention to it because he's struggled to stay healthy for quite a few years, so you don't notice it as much. But his shot rates are near the top of the league amongst guys like Dougie Hamilton, Kale McCarr, Roman Yossi um, in, the, in the same realm. Um, he's a guy that's going to get a ton of ice time this year. Like He is the true number one defenseman in Columbus. Last year, he like he's a twenty goal threat as well, similar to to uh, Dougie Hamilton. Um, last year, he was on a sixty six point pace with Pascal Vincent as coach, which is <laughs> like like that's fascinating to yeah, me. Well done to you, ZW. He, w- he was able to survive, and especially for for a guy that eats on the power play, like. And the just with the, how tumultuous that power play situation was, like, like literally everyone on the team played power play time, and it seemed to change every single game. And somehow he still ended up with a sixty-six point pace. Like that's fascinating to me. So I, I just I. I've always been really high on Wierenski. This might be a bit of a high projection because I also don't think that Columbus is probably going to be that great this year. But I, I mean, he's he's clearly proven that he can he can. Uh, uh, he could produce even when no one else is. And uh, I like that a lot for him. So I, I do think that there'll be a little more structure under Dean Evison, um, and he's going to just play a ton of minutes. So I, I, I like 
uh i like him it's pro- my projection probably is a little bit high i think there's there's a few guys that are kind of in the in a similar tier um but he, i i bumped him up to the top of that tier I love that. I mean, this is a player I, I really love. I did kind of bump him down a bit after kind of the tragic news with Johnny Gaudreau there, just because it, it's like for fantasy, there was so much. Uh, yeah, there it, we were excited again about Columbus. And now we're looking at the roster. It's like, ah, you know, they're, I'm not, I just don't see how, you know, we're going to have to get a lot of steps from these younger guys, right? Like this Russian trio in particular, we're going to have to see someone like Marchenko, Chinikov, Voronkov, one of those guys really step up. Um, we got to see Fantilli, you know, hitting the ground running and have a, a breakout season. But I love what you said about Rensky's ability to do it kind of despite what the hell happened. You know what I mean? Like he had, he had Pascal Vincent, like one of the worst coaches in the league, Columbus had the 31st ranked power play last year. Garbage, right? So Wierenski had like, um, he had 57 points in 70 games last year and only 12 points on the power play. But he, you know, he played on the top power play. So I think there's a lot of room there, like a lot of headroom for that power play to do a little bit better, especially if they just make it consistent. Like get get a, a un, units out there and keep them together so they can develop some chemistry. I don't know what Vincent was doing, but I mean, Dean Evison is going to be a net positive for Columbus in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'm, I love Wierenski because he's a, he's a shot monster again from the back end, same as Dougie Hamilton, um, and a double digit goal threat. So I'm, I'm big there. I just feel like there's some guys that I'm a little bit higher on. I think I've only got Wierenski for 59 points, which is still an amazing season, but I, I'm a little bit concerned about just the ceiling there in Columbus with the lack of talent they have. Yeah, I think that's fair. You damn skippy, it's fair, Joshy. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep going here. We're rolling, we're doing stuff, uh, and let's talk about our number seven pick here for A and G. It's Adam Fox of the New York Rangers. This is kind of a surprise uh, having Fox this low, especially in a points league. Um, you know, it, it's just sort of the way it worked out. Like, there's a bunch of defensemen that were we're pretty excited about this year, but Adam Fox is pretty damn elite. You know what I mean? Like this is, this guy can have the quietest 70 points you've seen from a defenseman, right? Including last year, 73 points in 72 games. That's an 83 point pace, the highest of his career. He had 33 points on the power play. New York Rangers power play is a wagon. No problem there. Um, And he's getting a ton of ice time, right? 23, 23 and a half minutes average time on ice on the season, plus 17 goals he had, which, you know, that was based off massive efficiency. But yeah, I mean, why, what do you think about Fox being at our number seven here? Like why, why is he ranked so low? Do you think in points, points leagues? Uh, I think it's uh, partially peripherals uh, and, and then just even, even goal, his goal totals aren't necessarily going to be as high as some of these other guys. Um, He doesn't shoot a lot, uh, especially on the power play. Like I forget there was some weird stat about how he has like one power play goal over the last two or three seasons or something like that. Like that was up till that was up to last year. He got six last year. Okay. Before that, it was like Uh, one power play goal in two straight seasons. Like yeah, yeah, just absolutely insane. So like clearly not not a guy that's prioritized in terms of shooting on the power play. Um, so I I don't know like. He also doesn't hit at all. Like, yeah. like he's another guy that that doesn't do anything. He blocks. He does get blocks, which is which is nice. Um, but yeah, I think that there's just there's just a few other guys that that do a little bit more all around. Um, but yeah, he is he is pretty safe for like 70, 75 points. I have him for eighty. Um, but just because of the peripherals, I have him ranked a little bit lower. Yep, that makes total sense. I mean, you you were the guy that had him uh, highest out of all of us. So I had Fox at number eight. You had Fox at number six, and then Nate has him as number seven. So yeah, yeah is there like what what's your thinking? Because you have him over, um, you know, guys like Hedman and Hughes, who we will talk about in a little bit here. But um, what do you like about Fox over players like Victor Hedman and, and Quinn Hughes? Yeah, um, Victor. Ha- so I have them for like a fairly similar point total, yeah. Hedman and 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 Fox. Uh, Hedman actually surprisingly doesn't do a ton peripherally either, which is, it, you, you think of him as like a big brooding defenseman. Uh, but when you look at the numbers, he actually like is not, is not really using his body that much. He's not blocking a ton of pucks. He's just, he's just in the right position, uh, in a, in a lot of situations and shutting, shutting things down before it gets to that point. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that, that's why I have Fox a little bit higher, 
um just because even just with the blocks I, he he yeah. is he it kind of takes him a little bit over the top but again these guys are all so close together like they're they're in a very similar tier headman and fox um and i don't know i i think it's almost a coin flip yeah yeah absolutely i mean you know i i don't want to give up our tiers right off the bat here but yeah like i've got fox uh queen hughes and headman in the same tier right so to me it's like any of those and you're 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 loving life you're right in that wheelhouse there and like you said these guys are really close um so yeah i, I like fox for sure like i said he's kind of a boring player and one thing i do like about fox is i think he's a little bit uh, of a value in drafts, right? Because of what we're saying, yeah. we've, we've ranked him, you know, kind of a little bit lower. He's like the bottom end of that tier, in my opinion, but, um, he's still like, you've got him for 80 points. I got him for 75. Like that's in the wheelhouse. He's, he's running that power play in New York, which is an amazing power play. And that's not going to change. Right. I mean, the only thing that derails Fox really is injury. And, uh, he's, he's been good with that too. So, um, I definitely like Adam Fox. It's just, it's not a sexy pick, is it? No, it's not. And and historically he's actually gone he's gone higher than I I I've liked to draft him, but he's kind of fallen to a point where he's sort of in my wheelhouse depending on where I'm at in the draft. So so uh I he's a guy that I've actually been considering a lot more. I still haven't picked him up in either of my leagues, but uh he uh yeah, no, it, it it's it's interesting that people are starting to uh to change their opinions despite his consistency in terms of point production. Yeah, no, he's awesome. He's his uh, ADP on Yahoo thirty five point five. So, I don't know. This is a this is a guy people are taking in the second round before. So if you can get Adam Fox at that, or even a little bit later than that, I mean that's a smash. I think you're gonna you're gonna love that in a points league, no question. All right, so if we're talking Adam Fox, we got to go on to our next guy here um, at our number six for A and G. It's Quinn Hughes. Um, yeah, and I, I I love this pick. It's, it's so weird. It just again shows the different formats make uh, a huge difference, right? Like your point scoring system we, this, this is Quinn Hughes just got the Norris trophy, but we've got him ranked as our sixth best defenseman. So NHL ranked best defenseman. We uh, in fantasy six, right? And uh, you know, we can go into why that is, but um, yeah, he had a great season. No question. Quinn Hughes, 92 points in 82 games, 17 goals. He upped his shots, which is uh, something I love to see. Uh, his shots and goal per 60 at five on five went from 3.88 last season, which is a career high at that point to now 5.41 this, this recent season. So that's huge, right? And he started to convert at a really nice level, especially on the power play. Um, plus Quinn Hughes. I watch a lot of this guy. He is, he is one of the best, if not the best at puck retrievals, like, you know, retrieving a dump in and getting it out cleanly. This guy is incredible at that. Like he rarely ever makes a mistake, you know, with it, with his first pass or the way he skates it out of the zone so he's just going to be involved in the offense just just on that alone you know he's he's feeding guys if the Canucks score goals on the rush Quinn Hughes is, is the one kind of you know feeding them with the puck there so I'm a big fan of him I don't know where are you at with Quinn Hughes like I've definitely got him over Fox what do, what do you think um do you think Quinn Hughes can match this 90 point season that he had last year yeah, so I I have him. Uh, my projection for Quinn Hughes is I think a little bit lower than you guys. And and again, like I dialed back the Canucks efficiency a little bit just because yeah. we've we've been outspoken about talking about their PDO bender. I, I've been prepping for a Pacific a Pacific Division preview, uh, and I looked a little closer at the underlying numbers, and they're not as as uh, insane as 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 I had. I had thought like they, they still generate a, a decent amount uh, mm -hmm. at five V five under the hood. Um, it's just, they shot at the highest clip in the league and they had really good goaltending. So that's why their PDO was so high, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to dial back that much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, Quinn Hughes, I think is, is, is a guy that's probably going to be a point per game. Um, Vancouver's power play is fantastic. Uh, it potentially even gets better, uh, with Jake DeBrusque. Um, so we'll, I mean, we'll see what happens there. The jury's still out there, but, um, I, I, I really, uh, I, I like Quinn Hughes a lot the, the, similar to Adam Fox and actually even more so, um, he, he doesn't do a ton peripherally. So he, while he did up his shot totals, the hits and blocks are almost completely yeah. absent. Brutal. Um, so I, I mean, he's a guy that I love to watch. I love watching Quinn Hughes. He's so smooth um he's so shifty I, I i i love i love watching him skate uh but yeah in terms of fantasy he does uh he does take a bit of a hit just because of his lack of physical play 
Yep, absolutely. I, I do love that. Like, I feel like 92 points is probably a ceiling. Like, where <laughs> I don't know how yeah. he gets more than that, right? Because you mentioned about the Canucks efficiency. Um, I, I had to dial that back uh, on pretty much every Canuck, definitely every Canuck. But yeah, he still came out with a really nice projection. I think I have gone for 87 um, on yep. the year, which feels like, like you said, there's not that much stuff that, that we have to tweak for him to get 87 points, right? He gets crazy minutes, uh, all the power play time on ice and uh, access to all these beauties here on the Canucks who are an efficient team. They've shown yep. that even through their bad years, like they're, they're efficient offensively. So I don't see it falling off a cliff, but yeah, um, that's, that's the reason I've got him over Fox. They're just, I feel like the point ceiling is a little higher. They're, they're very similar players in terms of their, uh, you know, perifs. Well, I guess Fox blocks a hell of a lot more than that Quinn Hughes, but they, they kind of profiles the same player to me, but I think the offensive season is a little higher for Hughes. So that's where I'm going there. But buddy, 29 hits in 82 games and then 55 blocks for defensemen. I mean, that's, that's criminal, you know what? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Talk it. You got, what are you, you doing know? in your own zone? What are you, you doing? Know? I guess maybe, maybe he just has the puck all the time, but yeah, are you talking about puck retrievals too. Like maybe he's just taking the puck. He doesn't need to be and, and, and getting it out of the zone quick. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. That is a crazy low number for blocks, but uh, I don't know. There you go. All right, let's move on. We're into our top five here um, for A and G defensemen, and we've got Victor Hedman. See you at the party, Victor. Yeah, we will see you at the party. Um, I'm I'm low key into Hedman this year, and I find myself getting him in, in some spots here at a reasonable value. Like this this guy obviously had the the down year in 2022, 23, only 49 points in 76 games, and that sort of prompted people to think like. Is this guy done? Is he, you know, uh, passing the torch to Mikhail Sergachev, who was on the team at the time? You know, he was bumped off power play one for large portions of that year. Well, hell no. Victor Hedman came back with a vengeance. This guy popped for 76 points in 78 games, including 13 goals. Love that. Kind of back to the, the same old Victor Hedman for, for another year at least. And that included massive power play numbers, 31 power play points. He got the full power play treatment. And now Hedman's or uh, Sergachev's out of town. So there's really no one besides Darren Radish, uh, who's going to, you know, bump like bump him off the power play and, and we know that's not happening so nope. i feel pretty good about the floor of victor hedman this year and uh you know i projected him as such i've got him for over 70 points and i think he's a very reasonable top five pick here for ang where are you at with victor hedman what about a jj Mosier power play one what do you think uh, about that blake i don't hate it i know they did that in Arizona. <laughs> i like you know what that makes actually more sense to me like i've got darren radish sort of projected for the second power play but you, you traded for Moser like, and he's done yeah. that before he had a little bit of uh, a little stretch there with Arizona now Utah, but I mean, yeah, I, it just, please don't get injured. Victor Hedman. I've got him in two spots, three spots already. You and I drafted him in our uh, cup full dynasty league. We got, oh yes, we did. We yeah. Victor Hedman and, and we're loving life. I think, uh, yeah, he's, he's good to go. So no injuries to Victor Hedman, please. Yeah, for sure. I I mean, yeah, I remember that. I remember I was I I was pretty heavy on Hedman. Yeah, you, uh, you were like, "What are we doing with this next pick?" I was like, "Hedman, we're taking Hedman absolutely. We're going to win now. Let's do this." Uh and uh yeah, uh no, I I I like Hedman a lot. Uh, he's a guy that I've historically drafted um in a in a in a lot of places. Um, this year he does seem to be sinking a little bit. I mean, not as much as last year, obviously, because people were scared he wasn't going to get power play one back. And then obviously everyone caught him at, at immense value. You're not going to get him at that much value this year, but I do think third round, fourth round headman is, is really, really, really nice. Uh, and I have him projected for a very similar point output that he had last year. So, um yeah i i'm i'm a big fan of his for sure i have a few concerns about the tampa bay power play and what they're going to look like without steven stamkos uh but that being said they have so much skill there i think they'll figure it out it'll just be a different format and maybe a bit of growing pains here and there at first yeah i mean i have a little bit of concern just over the lightning in general right their defensive environment yeah. got terrible i mean vasilevsky had a garbage year last year now you've traded your captain away like it's that there's there's some variance there, right? But I mean, the thing that's that's sticking strong is you got John Cooper as your coach, amazing coach, right? Obviously knows how to win, yeah, and the rest of the core is pretty locked in. Like, um, but Nate and I were talking about this, and uh, like I'm sure you would agree, like they're one Kucherov injury away from like oh, not yeah. making the playoffs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's everything to this team, and uh, yeah. I, I really feel like if Cooch goes down, it could be a really ugly year in Tampa. 
They they have absolutely nothing beyond that. Obviously, Braden Point, but he he I think like maybe this is a hot take, but I feel like he's kind of a complimentary player uh, with Nikita Kucherov. I think if you take Kucherov off of Point's line, he's not nearly as effective. Um, and then yeah, I think yeah, I think Kucherov is the is uh, the guy that stirs the drink. And it, I mean, you saw it last year. Beyond that top line, they were they were doing yeah. nothing, like absolutely nothing. So. Um, yeah, I would be majorly concerned and they almost didn't make the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, that's a team that, that, um, if you're talking about teams in the Atlantic division that are getting better, that could potentially make a push for the playoffs. I think that's the first team that I think of that could fall out. Um, even, even if Kucherov is healthy. Yep. It's weird to say, but I mean, if he, if he stays healthy all year and, and Gensel, you know, is able to do something similar to what he did in Carolina there. Yeah, it, it might be all right, but I just never like a situation where your you know, your bottom two lines are basically out there just to not get scored on. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, you know, hopefully like they're everything's riding on that top line and if they have a cold streak or whatever, like yeah, th- this team's going to have some problems scoring goals. So Obviously, they got to get that power play sorted out as well. But um, I feel really good about Hedman this year. I feel like we should be pretty damn excited about him. Um, like, not, you know, yeah, defensive environment aside, like he's still the guy on the power play. Um, he's got tenure there, like Kucherov, Point, and Gensel. It, it should be a wagon. I see another 30 power play points for Hedman, and his floor is super solid. So I, I love him here at number five. All right. Let's move on. We're now in the top four. And yeah, just an interesting conversation. I'll, I'll put these guys together here, Josh, just so we can talk about them. But at number four, we have Evan Bouchard. And at number three, we have Rossman Stalin, um, which are, are two amazing defensemen there. Um, I actually had Bouchard ahead of Dahlin in points leagues. And you and Nate both had him at uh, number, th- uh, yeah, number three. And I had him at number four. So talk to me about, first off, the difference between Bouchard and Darlene and, you know, why you like Darlene a little bit better than Bouchard. Yeah, so so with Bouchard, uh, obviously, I think the points upside is higher, and that's mainly because of he's he's going to be playing on the Edmonton power play. Um, that's the big, the big thing there. Um, but essentially, everything else across the board... Uh, Darlene does better. Like he, all of the peripheral categories, he shoots more, yep. uh, which is a bit of a surprise because because uh, Evan Bouchard is a big shooter. Um, but his hits and blocks are are, are pretty elite. Um, and does does a little bit of everything. If yep. Buffalo's power play gets a little bit better this year, which I expect it to, um, that's that's going to be to be big for his points upside. So I see him uh, in like the the seventy five point range with really good perifs. Where whereas I, with Bouchard, I see him in potentially hitting eighty points. Uh, so a higher points upside, but then uh, the peripherals are, are, are lower. So that's why Darlene gets kind of pushed a a little bit over Bouchard for me. Yeah. I think the reason I had Bouchard ahead of Darlene is, is really that power play, right? Like, like you said with Darlene, it's like, yeah, um, Buffalo's power play should be better. And I agree with that sentiment, but we know Edmonton's power play is not going to get worse, (laughs) right? Like it's, it's good to go. And this guy's, you know, he's, he's on there, right? He, like he could easily beat his 35 power play points that he got last year. He's that good. And that power play is that good. So I think that's what tipped it in my favor because we're with Darlene, like you said, there's, there's so many things like he's just doing better. Um, He's doing better than Bouchard and in a bubble, I think Darlene is a better player, but it's, it's more the team situation for me, why I ranked Bouchard ahead of Darlene in a points league, right? In a cats league, you're clearly taking, you know, Darlene there. And we'll talk about that in a bit, but yeah, it's just, I, with Buffalo, I I'm banking on that power play getting a lot better, um, you know, for a lot of my projections, right? Cause it, it can't get much worse. They were terrible last year and I'm so glad to see Don Granado out of there. I mean, you know, not, not, uh, you know, I don't wish anything bad on the man, but in terms of fantasy and coaching get the hell out of my sight. All right. Get Tage out there for 20 minutes and do it now. So hopefully, uh, you know, Lindy Ruff, uh, he's back in the saddle there and kind of makes that happen. But Darlene is the man there. And I, I love both these guys. And I think, it's potato potato at this point. Like if you, you miss out on the top two guys and you got Bouchard and Darlene staring there, I don't think there's really a, a, a wrong pick there. Is there? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, I, I still think I still uh, definitely lean Darlene, but I, I don't think you're going to be upset taking Bouchard for sure. 
You bet your sweet bippy, buddy. I mean, big seasons by these guys too. Like 82 points in 81 games for Bouchard. Darlene had 59 points in 81 games. That's a 60 point pace. But again, the power play numbers fell off a cliff for Darlene. 20 power play points after 32 the season previous. So yeah. I think it'll be somewhere in between. But yeah, I, I love both those players and I, I love a piece. These guys are, are play drivers for sure. Um, all right, let's move on. We got our top two. I think this is pretty much a foregone conclusion. We got to talk about our number two here, defenseman Roman Yossi. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. I've seen uh, Yossi faded a little bit. I've seen people taking Darlene or Bouchard ahead of Yossi or, or they're concerned about the, all the changes in Nashville and, and how Yossi fits into that. Do you have any concerns whatsoever with Yossi? Like this guy's coming off an 85 point season with 23 goals, massive efficiency, big time blocks, big time power play. I mean, do you think it's going to be better or worse or the same next year with the, with the new look team? Yeah, no, I don't have any concerns about concerns about Yossi. I, I feel like, uh, I feel like it may even, uh, his, his situation is, is improved uh, yeah. potentially. Um, obviously uh, we talked about growing pains with the Tampa power play. I think there probably will be some uh, with this power play just because there is so much personnel change. But that being said, all of these weapons uh, like Steven Stamkos, I, I mean, he's probably just going to sit on those, uh, those left half hash marks and, and clap bombs uh, yep. just like he has for his entire career. So like, uh, I, I mean, what, like what what i think it's more like philip forsberg is gonna have to find his way in a different spot because i that is how i see it playing out um but i love roman yossi so much uh i in the couple i uh it, when it was getting to to the to my first turn i was ready to pick yossi and then mm -hmm. he went 13th and i'm like oh no oh. um <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was a huge bummer but yeah no i have seen him faded a little bit uh into the second round i think if you're getting yossi in the second round you're you're pretty stoked about that because he's um outside of our number one guy he's the clear cut number two i think yeah i really think so like i mean uh, something you talked about like with zach Renski, i think roman yossi is even an elevated version of that this guy drives yeah. offense no matter what he's been the straw that stirs the drink there you know for the last three years, four years. Um, and that's not going to change this year. Like I think the people that they brought in there for Nashville are going to improve the team. Obviously they're going to have to learn how to play with each other, but I mean, you still got Yossi, you've still got Forsberg. These are the guys that really drove the success for Nashville last year. Um, so yeah, I just, I love this spot here. Yossi is amazing and I, I'm not concerned at all. He's 34. I think people are, I've seen something too, where they're talking about a little bit of age related decline. I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it at all. I think this guy's the clear number two. And I think, you know, you got a point there. This, this might be like, uh, an improved Roman Yossi with, with this new lineup here. So we're stoked on Yossi and it feels right. Um, do you think he can get 20 goals again this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the, this guy, this guy, uh, almost crests 300 shots every year as a defenseman. Uh, so I, I, I think that, and, and maybe those go down a little bit just, just because he's probably not going to be the primary shooter on the power play, but, um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I'm not concerned. I, I, I feel like he, he could, he could hit 20 goals again. Easy. We're loving it. Um, all right. We got to talk about our number one, uh, basically a foregone conclusion. Kale McCarr of the uh, Colorado Avalanche is our number one goalie for fantasy. And there's just so many reasons why, <laughs> you know, like first off, he gets an insane amount of ice time, which I love. Yeah. Like he was, you know, um, crazy ice time. He was second in goals amongst defensemen last year, second in assists. I mean, this guy's a perennial Norris trophy every year. I mean, the, the fact that Quinn Hughes won it, like he got lucky maybe that, uh, you know, McCarr uh, was injured for a few games because it's probably his trophy to lose at the start of the season. He's just so freaking good. This guy produces like an elite forward out there. Great shots, amazing power play performance. I mean, well, what, do you, what do you say about this guy? Yeah, well, you talked about uh, crazy ice time. Um, I know, Nate, uh, we did the uh, the bets um, when it, for Nate's episode with with Ryan from Top Cheddar Fantasy, <clears throat> and my bet for for uh, a player with the most ice time in the league next year is Kale McCarr. Um, he's right near the top. Uh, he d he plays in every every situation and is just just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this guy this guy is a lock for twenty goals. I think um, ninety plus points. Uh, he is the one guy in the league other than I guess uh, I mean. 
Roman Yossi almost got there a few years ago, <clears throat> but he's the one defenseman in the league where I'm like, I'm like, if he hits 100 points, like no one's no one's batting an eye. No one's surprised about that. Yeah. Uh, and he's the one defenseman in the league where I'm absolutely okay with taking him in the first round. Um, so I, I I think that uh, Kale McCarr uh, is is worth worth taking over some of those other guys um, at the back end of the first round. And I. Yeah, I, I mean, there's there's not really there's not a whole lot to say about it. Like, what what are you gonna say? This is he's the Connor McDavid of defensemen. It's true, man. And you know what? Uh, Nate and I talk about this sometimes. We never get a chance really to talk about these elite players. Like, we're never digging yeah. or doing a deep dive on Connor McDavid or Kale McCarr. You know, because why? It's just like they're they're good to yeah. go. You don't have to analyze it, right? And this guy's good to go. The only thing that derails McCarr is injury, right? Which, I mean, you know, he played 77 games last year, which is excellent. So anyways, there we go. One, one thing I want to do before we move on to category leagues here, Josh, is just talk about tiers and just see if you agree with this. So I've, I've sort of tiered these in an unofficial way, and I just want to get your thoughts. So McCarr, I have him as the top defenseman tier of his own. He's the only guy. I've got Yossi, Dahlin, and Bouchard in a second tier. I put Hedman, Hughes, and Fox in a third tier. And then the last tier, Wierenski, Hamilton, and Dobson. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good guys? about that. Um, I, I I feel like Yossi is almost in a tier of his own uh, mm -hmm. on top of Dalina Bouchard. But I'm okay with having him as like the top of, of tier two. Um uh, in terms of, I, I mean, we talked about how high I am on Zach Wierenski, so like, I, I, I feel like I would bump him up, but I totally understand why, why you would, you would have him in a tier below Hedman, Hughes, and Fox. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy, happy with these. I guess there's a, there's an argument for Dougie Hamilton as well, just because, because of the, um, because of the Luke Hughes injury and the opportunity he's going to get at the start of the year to kind of bump him up a tier, but I think it's pretty safe to to keep him in that in that fourth tier there. So yeah, no, I I not not a ton of arguments there. Yeah, awesome. Um, before we move on to cats here too, is there any defenseman we sort of missed? Like any honorable mentions, guys that you think maybe should have been in here, or yeah, just guys you're kind of excited about that didn't make the top ten? Oh, good question. Um. Josh Morrissey is a guy that I I, I like uh, uh, that uh, I mean in previous years I haven't been incredibly high on but once I dove into the underlying numbers I'm like this guy this guy is great like he and and we're uh, like I, I think he's a perennial guy to push for 70 points like probably more like a 65 range uh, mm -hmm. but he's he's now the top power play guy in Winnipeg Winnipeg's schedule is fantastic as well uh, tons of off nights so uh, I think that Josh Morrissey is a guy that I'm targeting in some spots this year, which I, I haven't in previous years. That's the, that's uh yeah. Off the top of my head. That's, that's the one guy that I'm thinking of. I don't know. Do you have any other, other guys you want to talk about here? Yeah. I, I love Morrissey. That's, that's definitely one I would have brought up. I'm surprised he didn't make the top 10. Like, it, it's just sort of the way it, it all kind of came out in the wash. But yeah, I think Morrissey is absolutely worth, you know, a higher draft pick for you, like a fourth or fifth round draft pick. I think Morrissey makes total sense there. Um, what actually, you know what I'd like to get your take on is Matheson versus Lane Hudson in Montreal, because we just saw a tweet oh, yeah. come out uh, about like the players in Montreal, basically saying like, this guy's going to win the call to this year. He's amazing. Like obviously the, the Montreal yeah. Canadians, the players, they love what they see out of Lane Hudson. And it's, it's, you know, basically giving us a little bit of pause on Mike Matheson's role as the top power play quarterback there in Montreal. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? So, yeah, I did hear that. I, I think Elliot Friedman said it on 32 thoughts that there was a, there was a Montreal player that texted him after he said that Matt Vemichkov is probably the, the front runner for the, for the Calder. He had a Montreal player text him and be like, nah, Lane Hudson, Lane Hudson's going to love that. Run at it. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that, um, uh, there were some uh, there there was a picture at practice of so they're they're doing kind of pre-training camp uh practices with the team right now and they were running up a, a top power play um uh, with Mike Matheson uh with Line A Suzuki Caulfield and Slavkovsky which is exactly the way we projected it um so at least off of the hop it seems like Mike Matheson is is going to be the guy that they're leaning on there but i mean uh i i mean we talked about it too like like this was a possibility that Lane Hudson could push right off the bat to be that number one guy um in in, in terms of offensive 
defensive situations on this team, and he is going to be that guy in the future. So I think Matheson's Matheson's time is limited, but for now, um, I, I think he he is probably going to get the run out of the gate. It's very similar to to that Hamilton Hughes situation. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, that's a totally fair take. I, I do th- agree with you. I think Matheson's got one more good year. We'll see what we see out of Lane Hudson this year, right? Like um, the knock on him has been, yeah, his defensive ability, right? But that's not why you roster a player like Lane Hudson. You get him out there, you, you put him out in uh, situations where he's going to succeed. My hope for Hudson, though, is that they don't give him like the Tony D'Angelo treatment, right? Like your 16 minutes average yeah. time on ice in offense, like sheltered role. I I. I've, I'm a lot more comfortable with young players if they get out right off the bat and get like 20 minutes. Like, and even a guy like Brock Faber, like, you know, not near the uh, offensive talent as Lane Hudson, but this guy is clearly trusted by his coach to get out there and get the business. Like they're giving him 30 minutes a night. So that to me is where deployment really matters when I'm sort of valuing players for fantasy. Like I want to, if they, if they go out and they're given Lane Hudson, like 21 minutes a night, I'm into it. Like, I think we're looking at a, you know, maybe someone who could take over power play one, but if he's just clearly an offensive specialist, that's where I'm, you know, he's more of a streamer level for me. So anywho, all right, that's that. We got to talk about category leagues. We got to talk about beefers. All right. Cause people do that. All right. How, how many category leagues are you in this year, Josh? You, Cause we our dynasty not, is a category or is the couple. That's a, that's a, that's a category as well. Yeah. The couple dynasty, dynasty is a, yeah, that's a, that's a category. I think those are the only two that I'm in this year, which is, is unusual for me. I'm usually in, in at least one redraft, but I didn't, I'm not in the Apples and Genos patron league this year. I didn't win it last year. So I thought I'd, I, I should probably move on. Uh, and, uh, I kind of got grandfathered into, to still being in the patron league because I won it the year before, but no, I, it, and it did not go well last year. That's funny, man. Yeah. I mean, what, like those dynasties with you and then, um, one banger league, like a full banger league with the locked on fantasy hockey guys. Oh, nice. uh, which I've had a, like it's full bangers, like penalty minutes, uh, which is a is a unique stat to sort of get into yeah. here. I, I'm, I can't say I'm I guess it's fun. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I feel like it takes a little bit of skill out of the game, but it is kind of fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and it does oh, open yeah. up the, the, you know, the vault for players that, you know, really don't have a lot of value to now have a ton of value right um so yeah anyways I'm, I'm in one but yeah this is there's always an interesting conversation to me and we've had it before with our wingers conversations like you know how are you prioritizing offense compared to you know the other categories the peripheral categories are you still going big time offense um when you're drafting in a category league defenseman or are you actually starting to lean into guys like mo cider mckenzie Weger, and and the like yeah that's a that's a thing like i i I definitely like to to pick guys that have a lot more peripheral, uh, a, a good peripheral floor. Mm-hmm. So guys like Quinn Hughes and Adam Fox like kind of get get pushed way down my draft board. Yep. Um. So I I, I think that I, I prioritize forwards a little bit more just because it's harder to um it's harder to supplement offensive categories. Um. And I'm gonna get a little bit more out of that from from forwards a- yep. and off the waiver wire, it's a little bit more difficult to, to get offense in a bangers cats league. So, but uh, on D uh, it, it's a, it's pretty easy to be able to supplement hits and blocks. So uh, you can pick up a guy like Braden McNabb or I don't know, like there, there, there's a bunch of guys that are, that are kind of uh, that are perfect guys to, to, to supplement your team on D. So I find like really, uh, on defense in in bangers cats leagues, uh, I I'm more likely to get like a couple power play quarterbacks, mm-hmm. and then beyond that, just like guys that I, I contribute a little bit offensively, but then but but get a lot of bangs like Jacob Trubas and oh yeah, and I guess like Braden Schneider is a guy that that might be kind of a low key uh, a low key guy that may break out a little bit this year. Not not necessarily offensively, but he may just have a bigger role on on the Rangers and therefore potentially get a little bit more peripherals. But anyways, I'm I'm kind of just rambling now. Uh, yeah. It, it- yeah. No, it's good stuff. I, I I do love bangers leagues for this. Yeah, like you said, like guys like Braden Schneider is coming out of the woodwork. Jeremy Lozon last year. Why the yeah. hell are we talking about him? Because he led the league in hits by a wide margin. This guy was lapping the field. Um, so so yeah, there's a lot of value to those type of players. So it's a really interesting format. I should play it more to be honest, but I find like it's I don't know. I, I like 
the ability to project points. That's what I feel comfortable doing. It's hard for me to project hits and blocks. And also in, in different arenas around the league, they, they record it differently, right? Like, like there's discrepancies, you know, in Nashville, yep. like for instance, they're going off. They're like, yeah, here you get a hit. You, was that a hit? That's fine. He touched his shoulder to the yep. other guy. It's like, damn. All right. Um, so I don't know. Like to me, I, I really am kind of a purist when it comes to fantasy hockey. Like I want to, I want to win on skill, right? And I find that that's projecting points. I don't know. Are you kind of in the same boat there? Yeah, I definitely feel a little more comfortable with points. I, I do like categories, just the challenge of it. And it yeah, and it, it's hard. like a completely different strategy when you're streaming too. Um, like you kind of target your weaknesses in terms of which categories you're you're maybe not as strong at. Uh, you look, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's just like kind of a completely different, way to play fantasy like it's yeah, almost yeah. a different game entirely so uh I, but i do enjoy it but yeah i'm not in as many this year and yeah well like you said i do i do prefer to project points for sure yeah that's what i feel confident in i don't know <laughs> but uh i don't know there are people out there that project stuff so you know um hits yeah. and stuff and you can check them out because they're great all right let's get to business here we're gonna do an abbreviated uh, top 10 here banger league uh category league defenseman let's start with number 10 and we gotta talk we gotta go to the old mill and we gotta get some cider it's mo cider yeah he's uh he's the one that came out as number 10 on our list here and yeah this is a prime example of a guy that didn't make the cut in terms of points but definitely makes the cut in terms of uh bangers uh league here so this is a guy that got 42 points uh nine goals 33 assists 42 points last year and a full 82 211 hits 213 blocks last year damn um and he had his ice time was down too i don't know what uh, what they're doing there in detroit but they got to get this guy out on the ice but uh talk to me about moritz cider a little bit and what you like about him and what you see him doing this year I just love the bangs, man. I, I oh, love it yeah. so much. He's got a bit of a of of a points floor there too, which which I like. Not a not a terribly high ceiling. I don't see him uh, taking the top power play back. Um, just with Eric Gustafson there, I mean, there certainly is potential uh, for him to play some power play minutes, and that would 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 definitely uh, push him even higher. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's 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 a bangers monster, and and oh, he's yeah. a guy that that plays in in all situations. So, um, so that yeah, that's why I like Mo Sider. Uh, I'm not as high on I was af on him after his rookie season. Mm. Um, again, just because they're not really prioritizing him in offensive situations. But but yeah, I mean, he's he's pushes 200 hits and 200 blocks. Uh, every single year so th that's that is extremely valuable yep the guy's amazing i love that usually we're like oh he has a strong peripheral floor and this one we're like he has a strong points floor right but you're really drafting him yeah. for these insane perifs right yeah. um but yeah i don't think he's getting power play one either we haven't projected him that way i think i have him for like 41 points or something kind of repeating yeah, same i think did. i think we all three of us have the exact yeah. same projections on on him and on eric gustafson yeah, I, I, I like Gustafson as a, you know, as an aside, as like a kind of a last round flyer pick. You get a, you know, yeah. potentially power play one defenseman there. He could do some stuff. So anyway, shout out to him and shout out to Mo Sider. But yeah, this guy's a beast and you definitely want him on your team in a bangers league. Let's move on. Number nine. We're talking about Dougie. Dougie Hamilton goes from, uh, oh, what am, yeah, he's he's number nine in category leagues as well. So again, we talked about the perifs not being great, but getting this level of shots from your defenseman and goals from your defenseman. Like, yeah, he's absolutely in the conversation uh, in as the number nine person here, because yeah, a 20 goal score from the back end is not very common. Is it? No, it's incredibly valuable Yeah, and uh, potentially uh, potentially a guy that could get a ton of power play points too. So yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is, uh, in my opinion, the most valuable stat, uh, uh, the most valuable stat category in, in bangers cats leagues. It's the hardest to acquire. Um, so I, I, I think that uh, all of those things combined, the shots, the, the goals and the power play points, those are probably some of the more valuable valuable categories so he, he he gets the ones that are important uh and then the the, uh, I, the hits and blocks are, are easier to supplement later so it's not a huge deal but yeah he still has a ton of value despite that yeah i love that uh and i totally agree with you i i always in category leagues focus on power play points so it's like yeah, yeah i i mean i look at the perifs but i don't care especially early on like that I, I try and get my perifs later. Um, and power play points. Yeah, this like 
this guy is good to go. Should get over 20 power play points next year. God willing, I don't know what's happening, but uh, please get this man on the power play for a crap ton of ice time. We'd love us some Dougie here. Let's move on. Number eight, Adam Fox made the cut. How did this happen? Um, yeah, I, I mean, Adam Fox does block, right? I've got him as my number yeah. eight. You had him as your number six. Oh, no, sorry, that's points. Um, I had him as my number 12. You had him as your number seven, yeah. and then Nate had him as his number 12. So you like uh, Adam Fox a little bit more in category leagues. Talk about that. The power play points. That's the yeah. big thing. Uh, and and points upside. I, I think I have them for a few more goals than you guys do. So that mm -hmm. that is probably a factor in, in my calculation here. Um, I, there's a lot of guys that are similar in this tier. But I do think Adam Fox, because of the crazy power play points, he gets the blocks as well. Um, that kind of pushes him pushes him a little bit higher for me. Um, so and then yeah, like eighty point potential here. Yeah. So I I, I I'm uh, yeah I'm a fan of Adam Fox. I I am a little surprised that he came out that high in my rankings uh, in a bangers cats league. But I'm not gonna I don't know I'm not I'm not gonna change yeah. it now. Totally, and I, I'm I'm here for it too. Plus like. It, like he had 44 hits last year, which is a career high. That's not nothing. That's not, <laughs> that's not killing you. Right. Like, like it's no, not I like, like not. Quinn Hughes getting out there and hitting like 20 people, you know, yeah. 40, 44 hits. That's reasonable with, you know, very good block numbers. Like his block numbers are legit, but yeah, yeah. 44 hits. You're not drafting him for that. Obviously you can pick up a banger later on, but I'm, I'm into it. I, I don't mind uh, Adam Fox here just for the offense. Right. And like you said, the power play stuff there. So yeah, he comes in at number eight for us. That's fine. Moving on at our number seven, we got Zach Berensky makes the cut here just ahead of Adam Fox. And yeah, he, he's got a very similar profile to Adam Fox, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Other than the shots, he shoots way more yep. than Adam Fox. But yeah, very similar. Uh, he's kind of like uh, if you uh, if you bred if, if Dougie Hamilton and Adam Fox had a love child, it would be Zach Berensky. Oh, my uh, God. So. It's <laughs> well, now I'm picturing that. Uh, I've got Zach Renski's face up right here. Now I'm melding, you know, Adam Fox and Dougie together. Yeah, we'll 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 make something. We'll get one of our graphics guys to make a make a guy here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. No, I mean, I've 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 I feel like I've said it enough on this show. Even I, I love Zach Renski. Um, I I think he's gonna get the shots. He's gonna push for twenty goals. Very similar to Dougie Hamilton, but then he just does a little bit more in terms of blocks. So. So that's that's where uh, that's why he gets pushed a little bit higher for me. Yep, I like that. Makes total sense over Adam Fox because of that shot total, and I think he's going to get more power play points this year as well. Twelve power play points last year with Columbus. Yeah. No, all right, that's that's going to go up. Even if it goes up by like five points, like that's just an extra yeah. five points right on top. I feel good about that. Love me some ZW. All right, let's move on to our number six, and now we're getting a new guy in here, Mackenzie Weger makes the cut and uh this is a really interesting piece for fantasy this year um in points leagues especially like where where are people drafting yeah. Mackenzie Weger in a points league like we're, obviously we know this guy is a banger like he, big time he's pushing 200 hits 200 blocks so that's why he's here but what do you feel like with Mackenzie Weger in a points league where are you drafting him there oh man that's tough I I've I found that like with my rankings, I have him really high, but I'm I'm so nervous about yeah. taking him in a points league just because I don't know what his power play situation is going to be. He shot at like really high percentages last year. Um, and I still have him projected for like 12 or 13 goals, which is considerably higher than he had before last year. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, he just does in bangers cats. Like he's a smash, like he's yeah, one of the best. Yeah. He, he, he gets, he's, um, similar to Mo cider in terms of his, his, uh, peripherals across the board shoots a little bit more than Mo cider. Um, and then obviously because, uh, I mean, has better points upside, even, even playing, even if he doesn't get the power play time, the Mo cider does. Um, but it, it seems like he he'll get at least a power play share uh a, a decent power play one share with uh with rasmus anderson so um if he gets it for the whole year like this guy is going to be one of the better one of the better fantasy defensemen out there um and uh i'm i mean whoever whoever gets him wherever he's going like the fourth fourth to fifth round in a lot in a lot of leagues uh you're going to be pretty happy with that so but yeah i am i i've been i've had reservations yeah. even when yeah. he's at the top of my board i'm like oh, i don't know but yeah, it, I don't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel good because we don't know the power play situation. But I absolutely agree with what you said. I think this guy's good to go without it, right? He had a 38% yeah. power play share last year. Still got 15 power play points, um, which is really nice. The 20 goals, that's not real. 
but I'm the same as you. I, I like because he was ha, was able to do that last year in that situation in a very consistent year that he had. I think I've got him for 11 goals or 12 goals as well. I, I feel good about that. Um, and yeah, this this guy's uh, offensive ceiling is much higher than most siders, and he's he's a very similar player. So yeah, if he can lock down power play one, it's he's gonna smash even more. He might even bump up this list. But yeah, for now, I mean Calgary's a pretty bad team as well. But Uyghur is gonna be a really nice fantasy asset this year. Okay, let's move on. We're into our top five banger league. Thanks for sticking it out with us. Really appreciate that. This is going to go a little quicker because the top five are pretty locked in for fantasy in general. At number five, we got Victor Hedman. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about his uh, peripherals being, yeah, kind of underwhelming, actually. Like last year in 78 games, 65 hits, 102 blocks. That, that, that'll do, Victor, but, you know. Um, you know, he's, he had two straight seasons with over 90 hits, which I thought was really good. He's had a season where he had 139 hits. So I think there's more in the tank there in terms of hits, but I, I don't know. It, that's the thing about pro projecting these perifs. Like what, what is the cause of that? Why, why is he 30 hits down from one year? Like, do you have any, any thought on that, Josh? Yeah. I mean, I, I was not really sure. This was obviously the first year I did projections. So it, it'll be interesting to see where my perifs come out. I did compare my peripheral uh, projections to Nate and to Dom Lecision, and they seemed like not super off base. So I, I feel pretty good about that, but like, it's not for any reason. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of times I, I looked at their, their hits the previous year and their hits uh, their hits in the last two years and then projected it for somewhere in the middle. And, and, and that felt good to me. Yep. Um, obviously if they were a player on the rise, I, I, le I leaned more to whatever they did this past year. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I, that's the thing is like, yeah, I don't think that that's necessarily like, Someone could just be like, I'm just going to fucking rock people this year and they're just going to do it. And like, just like, I mean, you, you could say that about anything. Like, obviously you saw Artemi Panera just like, I'm just going to shoot the puck now. And, and he did. And obviously you're, you, <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, well, for the most part, people are going to play the way that they, the way that they play, they're going to play their game, but. Anyways, I, now I'm rambling. I don't even remember what the question was anymore. No, I think you answered it. Yeah, just it, <laughs> that's it. Just drives home the point to me. Like I, I don't like projecting perifs. It's because there, there's things you can look at. Like who, okay, who's the defensive partner? What type of minutes are they getting? You know, uh, like how is the team getting caved in at five on five? Who knows, right? But there's so many things you can get into, and still you're still guessing, right? Like this guy yeah. had 95 hits in 2022, 23, then 65 last year. So. I don't know. It's uh, either way. I think Hedman, it doesn't matter. You're getting him for the power play points, you're getting him for the shot uh, shots on goal, which are really nice. And I think those hits should come back to some degree, right? Like I uh, project yeah. him for 80 hits, which I think feels good, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. I don't know. There, there are people out there that, that project these perifs a lot better than we do here. And or I'll, I'll speak for myself. I don't know you and Nate legends, but uh, yeah, um, that's where we're going there. Anyways, Victor Hedman, beautiful man. We've got him for, you know, over 70 points. So he's in your top five. No question. All right, number four. Um, this one actually changed a little bit. Oh, no, it was the same, uh, but it changed for me. So it's Bouchard and Darlene. So Bouchard, number four, Darlene, number yeah. three. I made that switch for the for the Banger League, no question there. Yeah. I mean, for all the same reasons, right? But um, talk to me a little bit about Rasmus Darlene and, and what he brings to the table in a Banger League. Oh man, he brings everything to the table in a Banger League. That's, oh, why, yeah. that's why we like Darlene so much. Like he, he is uh, a true category filler. Like he does everything very well. Um, there's n there's nothing that's like super elite. Uh, not like none of the categories are like wow. This guy he he's not he, he's probably not going to score twenty goals. Although he may push for it. Like I have him projected for seventeen. So uh, it it's definitely in in the realm of possibility. Um, he's not going to like smash power play points. Cause I don't think Buffalo's power play is going to be amazing. Uh, it's not uh, certainly not, not in the same realm as, as Hedman and, and Bouchard. Um, but he does shoot a decent amount. I have him projected for 230 shots. Uh, he's going to be hover around 150, 160 hits around 150 blocks. So not, not like, uh, not like most cider level perifs, but he's not, that far back either so he does a little bit of everything i love I, I love rasmus Dahlin here and i think his points upside is is pretty huge too 
Yep. Easy number three for me. And I, and I like that. I, like he had 73 points in 78 games just two years ago. Right. So I think yeah. he can, he can make his way back up there with a little help from the Buffalo power play. And then Evan Bouchard, like his perifs are pretty solid as well. 70 hits last year, 105 blocks, but that's not why he's yeah. out there. Bouchard is, is your offensive upside. And you know, you, you could easily make an argument for Bouchard over Darlene in a category league as well, because of what he brings to the table, right? Similar shots, crazy power play points. He's going to get more there, but yeah, the peripheral floor with Darlene is insane. And I think there's a lot of untapped potential there for him to, you know, get a little closer to Bouchard anyway, in terms of production. All right. And then let's go right into our number two and our number one. We got Roman Yossi at number two. We got Kale McCarr at number one for category leagues for obvious reasons. But yeah, I mean... It, you know what was weird? Like, Yossi, I I didn't really realize, like, he's not a great hitter, right? Like, I I'm just love no. Yossi so much, but it's not something that I ever looked at because I don't care, really. Like, I'm not drafting him for that reason. But, yeah, 46 hits last year, eh, that's, that stinks, man. But, I mean, he's, he's a block party, no question. The guy got 152 blocks last year, which is, um, you know, the third highest total of his career. But, I mean, you – this guy is Rasmus Dahlin on steroids, right? I was trying to think in my head. I'm like, okay, Rasmus Dahlin or Roman Yossi. Like, what are the differences? Obviously, the hits. But, I mean, Yossi's offensive ceiling is sky high, right? Same power play yeah. points, way more shots. I mean, and a ton of minutes, too. So, I, I don't know. There's what, what else can we say about Roman Yossi? Not a ton. I mean, yeah, 20, like, well over 20 goal potential. Like, he's, he's, he's going to be right there at the top of the league in defensive goal scoring um probably right around a point per game and yeah like you said we'll probably have the most shots of any defenseman he seems to do that every single year uh power play points will be decent they might even increase if this power play really clicks yeah. um so that that'll be an interesting one to watch so uh yeah i mean he's he's the clear cut number two um Kale McCarr, I mean, he he doesn't hit a ton either. He hits slightly more than than Roman Yossi. So like they have similar profiles, but then Kale McCarr, like uh, it does does everything just a little bit better than than Roman Yossi. He doesn't shoot as much, but he is more efficient. Um, he's he's like gonna have a few more goals. Uh, his points upside is a little bit higher. Team situation a little bit better. Uh, the the power play like his power play points like he he is. Um, I mean, he's a principal guy on the power play, whereas I feel like Roman Yossi's role, while he has been a principal guy on the power play, uh, it may decrease a little bit just with Stamkos, uh, coming into the fold. So that'll be an interesting thing to watch, but yeah, I mean, Kale McCarr, what, what else, yeah, what, what, what else do you say about Kale what McCarr? You... Yeah. Guy's amazing. Yeah. Amy's an easy number one across all formats. That's our top 10. Do you have any honorable mentions for, for category league guys as well? Like players that maybe didn't make the top 10 here, Joshy? Yeah. I mean, Josh Morrissey's another one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy him a lot. Uh, I'm going to just take a quick look at my rankings here. So I've got, I had, uh, well, obviously, okay. Uh, Charlie McAvoy is, is nice. another guy yeah. that I think is probably right around, uh, like he, he would have been right around number 10 here. Uh, he is another guy that I think, uh, I think I had him for, for around 60 points, uh, in my projection this year. Um, and then he, he gets really, really nice peripherals as well. So he's a guy that I would, is definitely, uh, an honorable mention for me. Um, another guy, Aaron Eckblad, uh, I think is, is someone that, uh, I, I've been, I've been bringing forward, uh, I've been champion championing Aaron Ekblad for a little while. Uh, I know that not everyone at, at Apples and Genos necessarily agrees, uh, but we're going to find out very soon wh who's Hell right yeah. about this. But <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, on that, where are you at? Like Nate is, is loving him some Adam Bokovist this year. And I've, uh, yeah. I've, I've seen other people that that's not a crazy take. Like I, I know. first saw that, that, that Nate was, and I mean, and he's he's not going crazy with Adam Bokvist, but he thinks there's a good chance like he'll at least get some time on power play one. Yeah, I don't see it. But um, where are you at with that? Do you think Bokvist is going to have a cup of coffee there? Maybe maybe start the season on on power play one. That would be nuts. Yeah, I think it's interesting when you 
when you look at the way that Florida utilized their power play last year, they really decreased uh, Brandon Montour's role Mm -hmm. as like a principal shooter. And he was more of a facilitator. Uh, Whereas like with Aaron Ekblad, that's not really his thing. Like he's kind of like he he's a shooter. So uh, so if if they're if they're looking for that, I think Boakfast probably is Mm -hmm. is the natural option there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. And yeah, I have heard it from beat reporters as well, too, that that is a potential projection there. We can't uh, let Nate be so, right on this one, Josh. We I know. Do, I'm like, I like something. I, I, I just right away in the off season when I was doing my projections, I'm like, this is absolutely Aaron Eckblad's spot. It's his spot to lose. Um, but you yeah, no, so. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely not as, as confident, uh, anymore, but I still think that, that, um, he'll get a full season under his belt. Uh, you'll see his five V five production uh, get a little bit better. Um, and I think Florida as a team has, has room to grow five V five. Uh, they Massively were one of the best teams. Yeah. They were crazy inefficient last year. It was, it was insane on the power play and, uh, five V five. I looked at their underlying metrics and I'm just like this team. I mean, obviously they won the Stanley cup, but I'm like, they could win the president's trophy next year. Yeah, yeah. They just, uh, just chaos last year on the yeah. Team, but they they make it work. They know how to thrive in that environment. That's for damn sure. Yeah. But uh yeah, shout out to Nate. Shout out to Adam Bokvist. All right. Oh God, you know we'd never hear the end of it either. That's then and that's fine. Um, you know, all right. Nate, Nate doesn't listen to the episodes this long. This this episode's over an hour, so Nate Nate turned it off already. He's he's not watching. That's, that's yeah. Fine. <laughs> uh, all right uh, we're talking to yang and the man that's it everybody that's our top 10 defensemen uh we've ne- we finished it we finished our series here feels good hopefully this helps you in your drafts and things like that um but stick with us here at apples and genos we got so much more we're on a streak right now joshy we got every day we're re- releasing the pod does oh it feel God. good oh yeah yeah it- yeah i'm gonna be recording uh the pacific division tomorrow uh probably by myself unless blake wants to hop on with me i know you've been doing a million podcasts and it's probably going to be like a two hour plus show like all the other ones have uh but yeah if you want to hop on on with me you can uh but i understand i understand if you want want to take a breather for a second (laughs) dude i've been loving that i I love the addition of uh gugs here guggen shout out to him it's been a really nice piece And we're ready to rock here at Apples and Genos. This is going to be an awesome year, man. This is my favorite time of year. It's hectic right now because we're putting out so much content. But it feels really good. And I can't wait to get uh, in season here and just get to biz and just start crushing. I feel good. You feel good, Josh, or what? I feel amazing. Oh, yeah. Except you're sick as a dog. (laughs) But, uh, you know, yeah. But your your, uh, enthusiasm is shining through, as always. And your beautiful good looks. All right. That's enough of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, love uh, love what I'm looking at here. Let me just say that. Anyways, that's <laughs> right it, back everybody. at you. Sweet. Okay. Um, we, we gotta go. I'm gonna just derailing. We could have ended this ten minutes ago. <laughs> um, all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we will be back with lots more. Celebrate your dang day. Bye for now.